Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Father. Shema Israel Adonai Elo Elu Adonai Echa. These are the words that little kids, Jewish, the Israeli, Israelites, they memorize. They memorize these words when they were they start to speak the language. This is a very important, the most important law of all for, for the Jews. And if you go to, to Jerusalem, you go to this uh, church, one of the big church, famous church, the church of Saint Anne, uh, Saint Anne, the mother of Mary. And you, as you enter into this church, you will see the statue of this lady, Saint Anne, opening the scroll and teaching <coughs> Mary how to learn and uh, uh, teach her how to say this Shema Israel. And you imagine that Jesus was taught by Mary and Joseph because this is what they do. All their life, if you want to identify or define what is a Jew or what is Israel, this is it. All their lives, all they revolve around this one law. And everybody has to memorize it. From when, when you, were, you start speaking, you have to know it. And what is this law? Shema O Israel. Listen now, hear Israel. Eloheinu. Adonai, there because uh, in uh, the Hebrews, they avoid, you understand, we understand that they cannot use, call directly the name or pronounce the name of God. What does that mean? So we Catholics, we, uh, we, it's, it's so easy for us to call Yehovah or Yahweh, okay? It's, but that is a blas uh, like blasphemy for them. So if you open your mouth and you say it, you should be dead, slaughtered. Because no one should speak or uh, pronounce the name of God. And suppose if you write down, okay, the, uh, the, the word Yahweh on a piece of paper, Okay. That means that piece of paper can never be destroyed. You have to keep it for the rest of your life and forever. You can burn it, you can tear it off or throw it away because they respect the name of God. And therefore, therefore, they would not call Yahweh or you know, the Ye Yehovah Witness. It just reverses the, uh, the syllable. You know? So they call Yehovah. Uh, the, the, the real pronunciation, pronunciation is Yahweh. So, they keep it. They keep that word. And they exchange it. Instead of calling him Yahweh, they call it Lord Adonai. That's why they say, uh, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. The Lord is God. The Lord is one alone. Okay, that's what they memorize. And afterward, you see all the things like you worship God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Now, in order to understand what does that mean, um, what, the, uh, what we mean by love, according to the scripture, the word love, it is very, very uh, tactile. It is very tangible. It's not like our our language. English is more philosophical, or sometimes is, um, and we we have that feeling. But when you talk about Greek and Latin, it is more intellectual. So the Hebrew is very human, it's very tactile. So when you, you speak about the word love, you understand in the context, the context is this. How you love somebody, this is what you love. The word, the love, word love has to do with wearing. Okay? When you love the word of God, the Torah, the law, you wear it. If you go to Israel, anywhere, and you see, you go to the synagogue, you go to the house of uh, an Orthodox Jew, or you know, a, a, a person, a family who really worship God. What they do is this: in front of their house, okay, at the door, there is a box. In that box, there is a scroll, and in, you know, you they put this law here: O Israel, the Lord is your God; the Lord is one alone. You worship only Him, okay? 
And if you go to the gate in the city of Jerusalem, you will see at the gate, and they still do that. Anywhere you see there's a kind of a, a, a kind of a cylinder. In that cylinder, you notice, as you enter into the gate, in that cylinder, you have this Shema of Israel. Okay? Now, how would the Jews pray? <coughs> well, they wear it. They wear the law. Practically speaking, they wear it. How do they wear it? You know, they have their little box and wear it on their forehead, <coughs> a band here. And in that box, there is O Shema, Shema of Israel. And they wear it on their, uh, their arms. Okay? That's how you love. Oh, you love somebody, you wear that person. You love the law of the Lord, you wear the law. You love the Lord, you wear him. Is it true? Is that true? The word wearing. You put on, you put on that person, you put on the thing you love. When you love something, you put it on, and you keep putting it on again and again. Like this morning, you are here, we are here. We are listening to the Word of God. We are wearing God's Word, wearing God's law in our mind. That's why we say here, you love the Lord with all your heart. Wear the Word of God in our heart and wear the Word of God in our soul. Wear the, God, the Word of God with all our mind and our strength, our body. And Jesus explained this, you know, uh, he saw him, you know, this, this uh, scribe, uh, this, uh, this teacher, he understand, you know. And Jesus said that, what Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, that means this teacher, this rabbi also wear the word of God, the law, in his mind. And this is what we are doing here. We worship God by wearing his word. With our mind, we understand it. Now, let us uh, apply it to our reality here. Last uh, Wednesday evening, two days ago, I, uh, I realized I saw, I saw the reality of uh, what's going on in our church and our parish. And we had a mass in the evening. We said, I celebrated for the, uh, the, the kids who come, they came here, about 80 of them. And remember, we had uh, the, uh, the survey, <coughs> the statistics that 80% of our population students do not go to mass on Sunday. And uh, we stated the obvious that the parents do not bring them to go uh, to Mass. But on that Wednesday night, I, I explained the meaning of the Mass in detail for the kids. Many of them. And as we come to receive Holy Communion, I was so surprised. Many, many of them, not just one or two, even you know, like over ten or those of them, when they, they came to Mass, these uh, preteen kids, and I say, the body of Christ, they say, thank you. And they say, the body of Christ, thank you. They say, the body of Christ, they say, thank you. And they say, have you received First Communion yet? What is that? Now, where do I go now? You know, the kids, they do not understand what's going on. Our kid, your kid, my kid, our. Right here. A lot of them. First communion. Do I go there? Do I go here? Some don't know. They do not know. God is there. What's going on? We have to use our mind and wear the word of God. You know, this is not like a uh, You know, this is not criticism, but this is const construction. We need to do something about it. Help. We, we, we love. We love our children. We need to give them something to wear, the Word of God. How do we wear? Well, teaching, teaching is so important. It is not my work alone. The first teacher is supposed to be the parent. If the parents do not do it, grandparents, you have something, you know, some work to do. You know, leave a legacy. Leave the Catholic faith. Uh, again and again, I ask myself, okay, what's the point of bringing our kids to faith formation? Well, we do the, the protocol, we follow the policy, do this, do this, do this, and check, 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 check. We give them information. They, maybe they can recite some prayers and then they forget, but they have no faith. We have to ask again about our faith. How do we wear the word of God? How do we love God? As a priest and as a religious, well, this is what we do, Father Tom and I, Father Joe, redemptors, we... All our day, you know, all the, every moment in our life in the days we prepare for the Mass and we keep thinking about God all day long, everything we do. 
in serving, whatever we do, we think about God. That is wearing the Word of God. And suppose you could focus on one thing like the, the Jews. They focus on this law and teach their children when they were young. And they repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And uh, the, 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 the law says, you repeat in the home, you repeat outside, uh, you know, outdoor. You walk on the street, you repeat it. And you go to bed, you repeat it. You lie down, you sit up and you eat wherever. You just repeat it. That's how we wear the Word of God. I'm going to move to another level. You know, we understand that we are Catholics, so it's always Eucharistic. When you love somebody, like you not, I love to wear my habit because I, I wear it, I love it. And you have a favorite dress, you love it and you wear it. So, I love the Lord, so I, especially the Eucharist. So I wear it and I talk with Him about uh, all the time. You cannot stop talking about Him. When the Lord loves us, what did He do? He wears our human nature. In a concrete term, He wears our flesh. He became flesh. He entered into, he, you know, entered into Mary and wear her flesh. <coughs> and then, that is not good enough. Of course, human nature and the flesh of human being, which is weak and futile, Pluto, it is that now it's not good enough. I'm gonna break myself into two pieces. I break my heart. Okay? I tear up. You know when when you love somebody, you tear your heart, sick at heart, and I'm gonna give you my flesh. I want. I love you so much. I want to wear you. That's when we receive Holy Communion. The Lord Jesus, God Almighty. Now we we're not saying about Yahweh, Jehovah anymore. Now that great I am, Ego Ami. Right now is with us here every time we celebrate Mass. And that great I am, the eternity, I am who am, I am who am present with you right in your hand. And He wants to wear your flesh. He loves us, He wears us. Our mind, our heart, our soul, and our flesh, our strength. Every time we receive Holy Communion, that's what happened. And this is what we need to do. We need to share with our children. And first we need to go to the Lord, go to Him and ask Him to instruct us in His way. Love Him by wearing Him and allowing Him to wear us. And suppose we understand that when you receive Holy Communion and the Lord is wearing my flesh and wearing my mind and wearing my soul and wearing you know, my strength and my, everything that I am, What's going to happen? He's going to give us light, give us, you know, His truth and His wisdom and understanding. And immediately we understand that the eternal life is with us right now, right here. Amen. Amen. Amen.